I'm here at Geopolymer Institute in Vegas after the World of Concrete event. They're going to show us around their facility, their printer, their mixer, and their geopolymer material that's silica based like the pyramids and limestone from Rome. This is an awesome project because we always hear about geopolymers, but rarely do we actually see them being used. Welcome to our warehouse. This is where we kind of do our brainiac work. Um, it's always been John and I, uh, two guys on the weekend, and that took over two years till we finally finished our, our printer, as you see behind me. This is a Cartesian 20 by 12, and as far as you can lay track, um, we're, as I think we mentioned before, a little bit different in the industry. We're getting away from Portland concrete. We're getting into a geopolymer concrete because it lends itself so well to 3D printing. So I wanna share, this is available that we are making them for uh, different clients. Uh, however, handling the, the geopolymer is a little bit different than Portland because it's a different chemistry. Uh, I don't know if we, talked about the Portland before, um, the difference between Portland and geopolymer, but I'll do it real quickly for us. Um, Portland binds, glues together, through calcium. And it's not a really good bond. Um, they heat it up and then make it into clinkers to make the Portland concrete. It's only been around for 98 years, under 100 years. Um, with that in mind, we bind with uh, silica, glass and it's a much better bond, but the chemistries are different. You have a hydrant that uses water and we don't use water. We do have a, a what you would call a syrup or a, a, um, a liquid glass. Um, and so the chemistry is a, a kind of an alkaline, but we don't add water to it. And what happens is when you're using a silica, it has a better bond because you don't have water in it, you don't have the shrinkage, so you also don't have the cracks and the expansion joints. And with our mortar, you can actually crunch it up and use it again. Concrete's not fireproof because it actually has moisture trapped in it and it explodes. So let me show you our, our printer. Um, we have done this kind of copying other companies and, and working through some of the uh, issues that we have since our mortar is different. Ours is a structural mortar. And as you can see in our warehouse, we have many, many bags from our associate Rinka. So now we have that on the deck here. And one of the things I wanna bring you over and show you is one of our pride and joys, which is a um, geopolymer mixer. Now, one of the most important things we know is to have a consistency in your mix. Well, it's no different with geopolymer. So what we've done is we've designed our own mixer, which is a self-feeding computerized mixer. It will hold over 1,000 different recipes and it's a touch screen. Uh, so if you look at it, it's encased, so it can also um, negative pressure to suck out all the powder, so there's nothing in the air. And it also has your, all your mix systems um, that actually deposit the, the materials. And I'll uh, just show you real quick, I think I have an index to get off of. And then I'll show you. Is that the command center of the printer or well, yeah. just the mixer? Th this is just for the mixer. Um, and it can integrate with our printer, but basically this is a 40 liter uh, mixer and it will become a lab mixer. I didn't want to buy a big huge mixer because we don't do two yards of concrete to run through a printer. We do little batches by little batches and what that gives us the uh, ability to um, continually print because it's curing within 20 to 40 minutes so our bottom layers are already curing as we get to the top layers because we don't want to stop we want to go all the way to the top so we do little batches because our, our cure time is a little bit shorter and basically it's uh, just a touch screen And these are designed and built uh, through our company. Um, and it has some really good technology. Can you explain the name? Um, Viola. Viola is actually um, one of our associates' name of their children. All our equipment is named after our children. The reason that we do that is because most of this work is for our kids. We're really committed to doing a different um, technology to help clean the environment instead of making it worse. 
so we lose a lot of time to spend with our children. So in our way, we honor our kids. And this is Viola. This is um, Alex's daughter. He's our formulator. Um, that's kind of why we have these names on our equipment, as you can see when we go around uh, Crystal and Viola. Um, it's our kids. It's very thoughtful. Well, it's, um, it's where we're at. We're all about our future generations, uh, not just our children, but our grandchildren for myself and then great, great grandchildren that we'll never meet, but we are actually committed to helping uh, save the environment so they have the, the way to live that we have now. I did all the structural. John, come over here. John is my partner. This is two guys on the weekend for about a year and a half that we were able to develop this. Um, everything that is screwed in and welded together, I did. And John was able to do all the uh, robotics. So we're the team on just making our printers. We do have a couple of printers that we're making for other people. Our printers are not sky high. Um, we don't have really the price set because everything's gotten so expensive lately. We don't know what things are costing. We are uh, ordering parts and finding that they're either triple, quadruple. Yeah, triple and quadruple the price that it used to be. So we're not really set in that realm. And we're a very small shop. We're not a mega um, large corporation, international and stuff. Uh, we do have associates in different countries, but it's still kind of a small shop and we're um, looking for investors and ways to that we can grow well this is a 12 foot by 20 foot the next one we're having is a little bit taller than 12 so we get to complete uh, a printing area for height but we also have it now 22 or 24 foot um, we don't want to go too big because basically we have a little bit different philosophy in printing we bring our unit out on a trailer pick it up and set it on the tracks and start to print we don't want to spend two days assembling it uh, I've been in construction for quite a while and that mobilization in will kill you in time. We can probably be finished with half the house by most people already putting their printers together. I was looking at this system and thinking it was a stationary gantry system, but it's on a track here. It's so. on a track yes. system. Yeah. It's on a track system uh, that we kind of develop with, a, we go for low cost. Uh, we don't need the high tech engineering stuff as long as it's going to work. The concrete knows no different if it comes out of a $500,000 machine or a $100,000 machine. It's still going to print and go along just like everybody else. And if you were bringing this printer to another site, would you do the same track system or maybe there's it's some... the same track we lay the track down we bring it out forklift or crane it onto the track plug it in and print where would you say was the biggest learning curve from getting started to where you are now um, our operating systems of what we tried um, originally uh, we finally uh, switched over to a CNC programming yeah we switched to a more industrial based <coughs> solution yeah versus and a standard 3d printing scaled up solution mm -hmm. And then we also uh, got attachments to where we're able to integrate and reset our, comp or our program or our printer to a new index every time we want to do. So it gave us a lot more leeway for us to be able to, to, to control the printer start and stop as we're learning to kind of put this together. So some of the conversation people kind of want to know where geopolymer comes from. Uh, basically, I studied at the Geopolymer Institute. We're looking at the technology that they had in the past and trying to redevelop that and bring it into our future. Uh, one of the things that I want to share with you is that we're not just a printing company or just a mortar company. We're looking for sustainable housing. And behind me, what you'll see is these are aquaponic systems that we put together. But because basically, the houses that we're going to be printing, we're going to put an aquaponics into it so that your house actually grew, grows food for you. We're talking about a net zero house, and then you can grow whatever vegetables. Right now, we have Malaysian shrimp. Uh, this tank is going to be for tilapia. So that would be integrated into your house, and you would be able to feed your fish off your iPhone. So this is, uh, we get into a lot of strange technologies. Obviously we're into a different concrete. We're looking at different ways of mixing. So we're not, well, I guess what you'd call your standard brand. 
we're kind of off the chart, so to speak. You can look at our shrimp down here if you like. Um, they're Malaysian shrimp. They do get to uh, 12 inch. We have a, a little guy back there. It's a little bit cloudy today, but they're all kind of hiding in here. Mm -hmm. You see them down there? Yeah, I see one on the PVC. Yeah. So, um, this will, and there's a lot more in here, but this tank's not used yet. So, it's just something that I thought would be more sustainable for people uh, to be able to have more control of their lives because I believe that this generation uh, is kind of being handled uh, a difficult situation. And uh, what we're looking at is if we can lower the cost in housing and we can make it a sustainable house and we can also integrate food, you have more control over the aspects of your life living upon the earth in a positive manner than other generations in the past. And that is our goal, is kind of an eco home or an eco situation to be able to use technology to develop a new style of living. So I've talked to a bunch of contractors and usually the guys with two, three decades of experience are set in their ways and they don't want to change anything they're doing. They, they like the way it's been done. Uh, is there an experience you've had in the past where you had a positive interaction with uh, innovation, technology that made you comfortable pursuing this route or you just felt like it was the time? I hear what you're saying about some of the contractors being stubborn. Those are the old guys because that's the way they've always done it and some people just don't like change. I'm one of those old guys and I'm getting into the change. So the, uh, the younger workers that are coming up today, I'm still training the young guys because the old guys are retired or gone or don't want to do it anymore. So the young guys are, have a bigger ear open to the nouveau technology. They're more computer avid. Uh, most of the old guys my age, they don't even know how to run a computer. So why are you willing to go into this and they are? You're pretty unique for them. I've always been that adventurous type of, this, uh, you know, go for the nouveau thing. I think we're at the tip of an iceberg on what's going to happen in the industry. Have there been other nouveau things in construction in the past that caught your eye? Well, a lot of the tools that have been coming around, all, everything's all battery operated. You don't have extension cords running everywhere. Uh, a, 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 you know, even a cordless nail guns, so you don't even have the air compressor and hose and all that stuff running everywhere. So a lot of things have been getting uh, engineered to make it easier to build, like Simpson hardware on lumber framing. I mean, they've really strengthened up the, the structural integrity of, of framing in houses. But with our concrete 3D printed uh, geopolymer house, which is going to be stronger than most any other concrete, uh, it's a big savings. It's going to be stronger than wood. It's going to last longer than anything else. I mean, wood uh, is going to attract mold and termites and fire and everything else. So our geopolymer is fireproof. Uh, once we get started, there's going to be a lot of big smiles on our faces. And everybody I talk to, whether they've never heard of 3D printing, once they hear a little bit about it and hear me talk about it, they're, they're excited. They're, there's people that say, well, maybe they are not want to buy a 3D printer or get into it themselves, but they certainly want to buy stock in the company. Yeah, that's so true. It's a cool industry to be a part of because people love hearing about it. Yes. At, well, Jeff Bezos, when he did his little outer space little trip, I happened to be watching the news when he got off the pod and interviewers saying, well, what do you think of the future of space travel? Oh, we're going to go to the, uh, obviously the moon and, and Mars and start building on Mars, 3D printing on Mars. That came out of Jeff Bezos' mouth. Our first residential project will be right here in the city of Las Vegas, and we'll have the first 3D printed home in Las Vegas. Uh, we've already got the lot. We're just waiting for our permitting at the moment. Are you aiming for uh, a high-end home? I know this material has a huge lifespan of potentially 10,000 years. Uh, is that an affordable house? Or? It'll be, it's actually an affordable neighborhood. So we didn't want to go over the top on this first one to show the affordability for everyone. And it's going to be roughly 1,800 square feet. And it's a nice modern looking house. So there's no reason why affordability can't cut back on the good looks of a house too. And those units, uh, that unit will be printed in parts here in the facility and transported on site or printed on site? No, it'll all be totally printed on site. Wow, that's fantastic. So this same printer or a different unit? Uh, a different unit. There'll be a 
Very similar, slightly bigger dimension. Mm -hmm. In which, uh, is that height or width? Uh, a little bit wider. And uh, between the, the tracks or the length of the tracks? Uh, between the tracks. Mm -hmm. So I have a wider footprint. And then you can get as many tracks as you want, right? Right, we can extend this track and then we have a, another adapter that we can get more height out of it if we wanted to do a higher building or do a two-story or something like that. So you get that first house done, that's like proof of concept. Uh, that's a huge yes. step. For, three, or for geo, geo polymer in the 3D, yes. Uh, that's an uh, even bigger step in the, I guess, whole perspective of the industry. But for your company, just getting a building done through the printed is a huge step. After you accomplish that goal, uh, what's the next thing that you're looking towards? Is it raising money from investors or trying to get more printers? Or Hopefully we'll have money raised for investors before we even get that house printed. So we're uh, raising money for the manufacturing of more printers and because we want to go into production and really supply affordable printers to as many contractors and developers as we can and then uh, geopolymers or setting up a big manufacturing plant here in the U.S. hopefully here in Las Vegas and possibly Florida so. I'd really like to see a manufacturing plant of printers that's 3D printed itself. The, the building that the printers are printed in is printed, or at least the headquarters or something. Oh, yes. Uh, eventually that would be our goal, yes. So we'll have our our own plant printed with 3D. So we're also going to have our training facility here. So we're going to train everyone that buys a printer. We want them to be successful with it. We want to show them about geopolymer. It's a lot different than Portland concrete. The ingredients for the geopolymer, are you able to procure most of those uh, in the U.S. or do you have to go overseas? I believe a lot of it could be had in the United States. There's probably some of it. There's an abundance of some of the stuff in Mexico, which is, you know, pretty close to us. And there might be some a little bit in Canada, a couple of the minerals that we may need. Is there anything you can point to that uh, inspires you to go this direction in construction? Uh, the time, uh, the labor, the cost of labor. So that's always a big determining factor in every construction job. Um, I've been a general contractor for over 30 years and I've framed a, you know, wood framing houses. You got six or eight guys there working for a month or, you know, buying away on lumber and there's always a big pile of lumber waste. Every place you've seen framed, there's a, a pile of waste. And then, of course, we know what wood prices have been doing recently, been all over the map. And, uh, with uh, geopolymer, it's, you know, there's no waste. You've only got two guys basically running the machine. I'd say you need a third guy just to help cutting in or around electrical sockets and, and doors and windows. So it's a big time saver is labor and material. So uh, there's some quotes out there that we could possibly build at one third the price of a normal house today. We're uh, Geopolymer International. Uh, you can get us at geopolymerinternational.com or if you want to make it easy, just put in the address window gpi.earth and that's kind of represents of who we are and where we're going. We're in uh, Henderson, Nevada, outside Las Vegas. Uh, this is our warehouse and we're welcoming anybody that wants to get into the printing industry. We're here to help you.